Welcome to the Latin Wealth Podcast, a podcast dedicated to educating the Latino community about entrepreneurship, investing, and business. Yo, what's going on, Latin Wealth family? Welcome to another episode to Wealth Wednesday. Back in the studio, super excited about today's conversation because if you listened to last week's episode, and by the way, I would highly, highly recommend that you go back, check that episode out. Phenomenal episode. We mentioned that we're going to talk about how to be or what makes a good investor, right? We talk about investing a lot on this podcast. We talk about business, entrepreneurship, but what goes into a good investor? investor. Right, so we're going to jump into that. We're also going to be jumping into Apple today and some of the, uh, I would say the challenges they, they're facing again uh, as of recently. So we're going to jump into that. Today's going to be a great episode. Uh, welcome back, my guy, Jeremiah, in the studio again. How you feeling, man? How you feel about the studio? I'm feeling great and I love the studio. Beautiful setup. Appreciate all the hospitality, mm -hmm. you know, coming in, knocking this out two weeks in a row. So I appreciate it. Absolutely. Dope. So we're going to jump right into it today. Um, the hits on Apple continue. All right. Mm -hmm. So global iPhone shipment dropped nearly 10% as Apple's 2024 challenges com continues. All right. So the shipment dropped 10%. Uh, while Apple is still the second largest smartphone uh, maker in the world by shipment volume right behind um, Samsung, there's some other Chinese firms like, and I don't want to butcher this name. Yue. But, huh? Yue. That's one of them, but Xiaomi mm -hmm. is, is a new one that's exclusively in China. China. Um, and Transition? Transition? Transition. Something like that. Um, they're also building momentum in the market. Again, these are Chinese-based uh, phone companies. Um, Xiaomi has seen a shipment rise of 33% in the quarter and the other company seeing an increase of 84%, um, which is absolutely insane compared to Apple's drop off of 10%. Um, similar to what was the company that we we're hitting on last week? Tesla. Mm -hmm. um, real quick. Uh, Apple shares have also taken a beating this year with stocks falling more than 8% since January. And we've been talking about Apple a whole lot lately. And you guys know that in June, there's going to be a conference, WWDC, the developer conference. We're all expected to hear something innovative. It's got to be something big with all these challenges coming out. Something big that should come out that's related to AI that, um, can push Apple, can turn Apple's boat around for the second half of the year. But we'll see. We'll see what they announce. That's going to be in June. We're going to keep you guys updated on that. And with that being said, man, how are you feeling about, well, we know how you feel about Apple. We, we know that. <laughs> no, I'm, I love Apple's stock. <laughs> yeah, you love I Apple. just would never purchase one. I would never right. own one. For sure. But I, I love the stock, though. Um, how, do, um, how do you feel about the stock right now, though? I still love it. Yeah. I'm still big on Apple stock. Um, I I'm. I get worried. They lose another ten percent. I'd start to get worried. I would. I hold it. Yeah, I'm probably still gonna hold it because it's still Apple. Mm -hmm. Guys, you gotta understand. Like, even though a drop in ten percent of shipments, I mean, Apple still market cap is still dang near three three trillion dollars. Like, it's mm -hmm. you know these numbers, although it's very large on the corporation scale. And yes, we talked about they they do need to be worried. They do need to make sure that they're coming out with something that's gonna be innovative and that's gonna you know, actually move the needle. Um, I mean, their fall off still keeps them at number two. Yep. Now. Number two market cap in the world right yeah. behind Microsoft. NVIDIA yeah. is behind yep. Apple. Yeah. So, as and much as we talk about, not to cut you off, no, but we get you get back on, but as much as we talk about some of the challenges that they've had this year, they're still number two. Yeah. And that speaks a lot about the strength of the company, right? That speaks a lot about the foundation of what, of what uh, Jobs created before he left. Mm -hmm. Now, I think the biggest problem with Apple is they still lack innovation, and we keep talking about this. Um, you know, Android is the number one phone shipper now. I mean, not Android, Samsung, which is Android. Um, Samsung is number one, I think, because of the innovations. They, they continuously come out with new features for their phones. I We talked about this, 
um, I think maybe four or five weeks ago. Mm-hmm. When is the last time that you actually had an innovation on an Apple phone? And I can and I'm and I deal with Apple people. Like you, you are. There's a lot of people I know in my inner circle that are only Apple people, and they have to admit I'm gonna have to stop buying. Like I've heard this from Apple people. They're like, I don't want to buy another Apple phone. Mm-hmm. That's bad. When someone's yeah. had nothing but iPhones, like that's a that's a problem. You see a lot of consumers buying the higher end model of the Apple product. Sure expecting that product to last them a couple years, five years or whatever, because they don't need to buy another one, right? They, mm-hmm. they can assume that it's going to be about the same thing. Mm-hmm. Let me just buy a good one now and it'll last me, you know, a couple years. There's mm-hmm. no need to upgrade every single year. I, I mean, I'll say I know people on the side of the retail that every time a new Apple phone comes out, they're going to go get that. Now, for the sure. smarter individuals are obviously going to have what they have. They have their computer. I remember you talked about your computer you had for mm-hmm. years, right? That mm-hmm. lasts forever. Um, and people say, well, PC doesn't do that. Droid doesn't do it. I mean, that's all, that's subjective, mm-hmm, right? Subjective. I think a lot of it has to do with the min- the mindset and what you buy into, what the narrative is for you. But I think what's being shown now on a global scale is, number one, if we're talking about innovation, um, Apple needs to come with something in June or they're going to be in big trouble. Mm-hmm. They've been in, they're in trouble right now, but they're going to be in big trouble if they don't come out with something. I think they've, they scrapped the car. Mm-hmm. Um, you mentioned you sent me an article about the M4 chip. Yeah, you asked me what my thoughts on that. I'm like, if you look at <laughs> M1 chip, M2, M3, yeah. like, like the computer I'm using right now has an M2 chip on it, and I have no issues with no it. problem, no problem with it at all. And there's some people that would suggest like you would have been good with an M1. Yeah, and for the people that are not in tech Speaking like that, the, programming and it's the the M chip is. Just the type of programming, the speed and whatnot. Right. Um, a lot of it doesn't really matter for the average consumer, right? Um, but I say I have to say M4, if this is what they're going to announce in June, it's got to be something to blow me away. It's going to And typically to be. looking at history, you know. They're adi- not. They're, it's adaptation's hard. Yeah. Right. I mean, how long did it take for the for the iPhone to to be created and then for it to take over the market share? Right? If you guys remember back in two thousand nine, um, you know the BlackBerry mm-hmm. was the mm-hmm. phone, mm-hmm. right? That that was the business phone. If you were in business, that's what you had. And so it took time, and it took time for iPhone to become that, to make those those contracts come into place. It takes time for adaptation. So whatever they're whatever they're bringing, it has to be revolutionary, and then you have to add in the time for the amount of time that it takes to be adapted to the market. Mm-hmm. And in the meantime, they're losing China shares, China. And this is the thing guys, most people don't think about it. We're like, well, why does that matter? It matters because China has dang near 2 billion people mm-hmm. in its country. Right. So I think in only India, India is about to overtake China with the population. But like, that's why it matters because you make a dent in China and yeah, you need the United States because of GDP and money and things like that. But then what happens if you get a couple other countries, you get Brazil as well. And the next thing you know, yeah, you need America, but mm-hmm. then it's not as big of a dent. Right. And so not having a foothold in China has been hurting iPhone. And what's funny is I saw them shift. We talked about it. They made a shift to uh, get these, get this uh, factory up and running in India. Because India is the next place of development, right? Mm-hmm. So China's kind of like China's been done. <clears throat> so now everybody's shifting attention mm-hmm. to India to try to get and see what could be next. But I see what they come out with in June. I'm I, I'm going to be honest. I'm I don't think they're going to come with anything. I'm just going to be honest. Yeah. And even if they do, it's going to take. We talked about this. It takes two to three years to to adapt it. They it, they might be in a bigger in a big hole. I think they need to be looking at acquisition of things they have the market cap what do you they say have the they're money. not going to come with anything you think they're not i mean they'll come with something okay okay, okay they'll okay, come yeah, with something yeah, yeah. but it's not going to be this grand revolutionary because okay. what was that supposed to be that yeah. was the vision right it was yeah. a headset and it, it's 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 crazy what you mentioned you you made a great analogy last week of tit- titanic and moving the boat around you can't turn it around it's when you see a company trying to make too many moves with this big old ship it's it is concerning you know, and it, it's kind of like these companies are just trying to throw something on the wall. Just to see what'll stick. stick. Yeah. And so it, it scares you. The same thing we talked about with Tesla, right? You see too many movements in the same amount of time in a very short period of time. And you get you get worried. As, a, as an investor, you start to get worried. 
Now, I'm not worried about Apple because, like as we said, they're still, with all these hits, they're still number two. They got the anti, they got trust uh, suits that are coming against them. They got, there's a lot of stuff that's going on. They look open for the kill, right? But at the same time, still number two market cap. Now, if they don't watch it, NVIDIA will take them over very quickly because AI is fastly evolving, right? And NVIDIA is kind of, they're kind of cornered in, aren't they? Because mm -hmm. Apple's number two, mm -hmm. NVIDIA's number three, Microsoft's number one. With OpenAI being owned by Microsoft mostly, mm -hmm. and OpenAI utilizing either uh, Tyron Semiconductor or NVIDIA chips, NVIDIA is kind of aligned with Microsoft's success. So as Microsoft continues to rise, NVIDIA continues to rise, Apple has no play in that. So they're kind of left. Yep. You know, that's a, that's a tough position to be in. 100%. Uh, for the people out there that are not, I don't think we've like hit on NVIDIA and what they do as a company. Mm. You want to hit on it real quick? Yeah. Uh, so they just, I mean, they're, they're chip makers, yep. right? And, and what chips do they make? They make the chips that are basically creating the computing for, um, AI, right? For artificial intelligence with the rise of artificial intelligence, with open AI being a company that is, you know, chat GPT, that's their product, right? And coming up with these very innovative and sentient like programs and productions of, of things that they're creating, you need a chip that can control and actually perform in the movement or with the seamlessness of a human brain, right? So this is, and they're like, really? Yes, really. So the chips, these chips are what's being able to allow for that, right? They're, they're creating that ability. Mm -hmm. And so NVIDIA is controlling that. Now NVIDIA sources comes from different places, Taiwan Semiconductor. There's all these different things that come into it, but NVIDIA for the basis and for the whole of it makes a chip. That chip goes into everything that runs AI. Mm -hmm. And as you get into more into Web3, and AI takes over more and more, NVIDIA's market share is only going to grow. Yep. It's not a fad. Let's say that. Yeah, 100%. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll see what they announce in June. You know, I'm... Are I'm, you confident? No, I'm not too confident. I respect that. Cause you're, <laughs> no, because you're an Apple person. Yeah, this yeah. is important. Your opinion is what I'm seeing amongst people. Now, me, people say, well, you don't like Apple. No, I don't, but I like their stock. And, but I'm seeing actual Apple users mm -hmm. and people that utilize Apple on a normal basis, Photoshop people, creatives, and they're like, I don't, I don't know. I'm kind of, and I'm hearing this mm -hmm. from multiple people. So that's very telling that people that are Apple, like devout Apple users aren't confident. Because the way I look at it is you have to come with something extremely innovative. And not only that, you have to execute on it. You got to implement it. That's the, that's that's the hardest hard. part. So you can say you're coming out with an Apple car great but that didn't work it didn't work you know what i'm saying so it's it's gonna be very interesting to see what they roll out they can probably go the safe route and say hey we're integrating you know some type of ai with the phone and it comes with the you know that's safe play apple safe is playing the best thing for them to do right now is to take their l's look at acquisitions they should have bought disney and they should do it before market cap drops too low you should probably buy disney get into the media and entertainment space get into biomed Right, um, their Apple watches and everything mm -hmm. has so much data mm -hmm. to collect from people. Siri has all that data. I would link that with uh, biomed companies, and I would I would make partnerships. Ey Lilly, something like that. I would get into that space. I I think I'd move out of the space. Mm -hmm. They've lost. I mean, it, we were talking about it, and I send you stuff that says Checkmate. Mm -hmm. Microsoft has Checkmate. Mm -hmm. They've got you locked in. Like I said, Nvidia is directly tied to them. You're in between a rock and a hard place. You're not going to win. I, I think it's. It's time to try to do something yep. else. Good yeah. point. Good point. Love it. Um, transitioning a little bit, you know, the thing that we mentioned at the top of this episode is what makes a good investor. So we're we're talking about Apple and all these different articles that we're reading and these research that we're doing kind of goes into being an intelligent investor, right? Yeah. You need to look at all these different aspects to, to figure out if this is a company that you want to invest in. Um, so I want to break down maybe three points each that makes a good investor. Um, I think the first one that we'll automatically agree on is due diligence. Due diligence. And that's what we do before every single episode outside of the podcast and all that. We do our due diligence. We read a lot of research from different sources. Um, we send stuff back to each other. We have conversations. Yep. You know, he opens up my mindset on a lot of these different topics. You do and the same. Hopefully, I do the same. You do the same. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, but due diligence is it, something that, um, especially in our community, right? 
I think when it comes to being a good investor in our community, I mentioned before we hit record that I feel like the confidence is what holds us back. For sure. And when you look at the great athletes, we always talk about athletes on here. We're both mm. athletes, you know, mm. Mike, Kobe, LeBron. Mm. There's not too many aspects of their game that they don't have confidence in, 100%. right? It's because they worked on their skill set. They've educated themselves. They watch film, so forth and so forth. The same thing when becoming a, a good investor, a good business person. Um, you got to get your reps in and, you know, um, <clears throat> and I think confidence is what holds us back and what lack of confidence comes from not being educated, 100%. not having the skill set. 100%. Right. So um, due diligence is going to help with having the, the lack of education, right? Every time. And I feel like a lot of people don't do the due diligence because they like the exposure, like you said, to mm -hmm. actually get to yeah. where they need to get to to actually find this, find this information, right? So I, I feel like if you actually have a, a, a guide or a mentor, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, and I think that's a part of good investing. For me, that's a point that you need to have is that a lot of people want to go it on their own. You go it on your own, you're going to experience massive losses. Yeah. Yep. And I think that's something people, if you want to kind of bypass that and get the cheat code, align with a proper advisor, right? A fiduciary advisor, someone that puts your best interests at heart. And even if you don't have them managing your money, but you go to them for counsel, that's going to be the cheat code. That helps you get to a better place because they can align you with publications, with you know different software and things that maybe could help you learn these type of things. Mm -hmm. I was t sitting with a client the other day, and um, they were asking about, well, if I just want to do this on my own, I said, okay, well, Investopedia has a game that you can play that's like a stock game. We talked about how I got started mm -hmm. in stocks and stuff like that. It was very, mine was analog. It wasn't digital. <laughs> but this is digital. They give you fake money. Mm -hmm. And you go and you actually set your yep. stuff. I think you saw me. I posted it on um, Instagram or in my stories. But that could help. But just someone to lead you yep. in those places to you know, not experience the losses. Some people are like, well, that's the only way you learn. And, I, mm -hmm. and that's incorrect. You either learn through experience or you learn through experience of others. For sure. Right? And um, as we start wrapping up this episode, we can do rapid fire. Yeah. Um, I love that. That was one of my points, run with the winners. That's what I wrote down, run with the winners. So yep. not only having mentors on your side, but also what are, you know, these big companies doing? What What is BlackRock doing? What are, like, what are the big movers and shakers what are the whales doing who's the biggest who's the biggest winner ever in the space his name is warren buffett mm -hmm. greatest trader like he is they call him the oracle of omaha for, and there's a reason for mm -hmm. that you should follow what he does what does he do he doesn't invest he doesn't overly invest into equities he's a very he's a big index guy because he can kind of take the market yeah. and oh this is only going to get seven or eight percent but over time that compounded and having multiple different you know, streams of income or different sure. index indices that places you in the proper in the proper place. So just like you said, look at people that are winning. What does Van what what stock does Vanguard own? Mm -hmm. What stock does BlackRock own? Like the like you said, look at the people that are actually making money. And if you just copied them, you're yeah. gonna win. You're gonna win, hundred percent. Um, another one I have is invest in yourself. Mm. I think this is extremely underrated. That's huge. Um, I think it's something that's spoken about a lot, but I don't think people. They don't know how. They don't know how. Right. Talk about it. What um, are some of the ways you invest in yourself? Well, first and foremost, you have to develop yourself, your mental capacity. Mm -hmm. Right. So I read. I'm an avid reader. I'm probably going to read three to four books a month, if not more. Mm -hmm. Right. And then also on top of the books that I'm reading. And you don't have to read. Like, I don't have time to read. Okay. Well, there's Audible. And you can listen to them. Right. And then also, I'm constantly reading articles. I'm constantly reading things that are related to finances. Like, you're going to have to prioritize what's important you getting to that next level and you That's elevating big. is the biggest piece of that right you sitting and talking about what's going on with the kardashians that's not that important because mm -mm. what they're doing isn't making you money no does that make sense like For even sure. us with sports and stuff we love sports but man i if it comes between me sitting and running an appointment or speaking with a client versus me watching a, a basketball game i'm going to talk to the client mm -hmm. right so just prioritizing things that in that that is investing in us reading Right, we talked about mentorship, but reading, listening, um, and focusing in on what it is that you're trying to elevate in, whatever industry or whatever subject that is. And self development is everything. Learning how to lead yourself. Mm -hmm. 
Because this thing right here is like the biggest, it's the biggest stopper. Yeah. It's the bigger creator of, creator of wealth and it's the biggest deterrent of wealth as well. For your sure. own mind. So learning how to control yourself, mastering yourself. Mastering yourself, learning how to control yourself. That kind of leads into my last one. With being able to master yourself, master your mind, mm -hmm. you'll be able to master your emotions. Mm -hmm. And taking the emotions out of investing is probably one of the biggest things anybody can do, right? For sure. Like when you mentioned earlier, uh, or maybe it was last week, you said you took a little bit of a hit with Tesla. Yeah. Um, I'm sure that didn't move you in a way where now you want to sell everything and no. you want to, you know, so you learning how to take the emotions out of investing is very important. And we're not just talking about the stock market. We're talking about business in general. Life. 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 Making life decisions. Yep. All the, all the time. Anytime that you think, a lot of times we make emotional decisions. Now there's, sometimes emotion is going to help you, right? You need to have a heart. You need to be compassionate towards certain things and people. But in a lot of cases, especially in business, if you remove your emotions, things become a lot clearer. The vision of what you're trying to get to becomes clear because usually there's some very logical answers that are right in front of you. Sure. And you may not, they, they're not the most favorable, right? And you don't want to do them, but sometimes, just as we said with Apple, like they, what's logical is cutting your losses, take that L, move to something that you can dominate in. And that's sure. for you as a person. Sure. Take your L, mm -hmm. learn from it, not a loss, but a lesson. Take that lesson and then build on top of that. Build on top of it. Yeah. Love it. Great episode. Um, if you guys enjoy this episode or gra grab any type of value from this episode, do this a huge favor and share this with one other person that needs to be hearing sure. the Latin Wealth platform. A lot more great content coming out soon. Uh, we appreciate you guys. Love you guys. And as always, it's the Latin Wealth family. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Peace out.